always it always starts with a murder always okay it is always going to involve some heart-wrenching murder that they cannot get over in these fantasy books <laughs> guys are all doing well during your quarantine I know for one I am taking advantage of this time being at home although I wish I could be outside I bought a new bike so really that's the reason I want to be outside but still it would be fun to get some sunlight I have gotten lighter by two shades since I've been sitting in the house so I cannot wait to get back outside but this video is going to be about things I've been doing during the quarantine to keep myself busy. And I have been reading a lot of young adult uh, as well as adult fiction and fantasy kind of books lately. And I did a huge book haul going to Barnes & Nobles. I think I bought like the first time I went I bought like seven books and then I bought six more. Um, I also have my Amazon fire here reading some books on here as well in the kindle app so to get started first and foremost during quarantine i have never read sarah j mass's books before because i wasn't really into young adult fiction but since you're locked in the house you kind of want to just get outside yourself and start thinking about other things so what better way to do that than to get in some young adult fantasy kind of books so my first introduction to sarah j mass was through her very recent release crescent city and I had a, I, I will tell you that I love this book. It was so good. The characters, the character development was so good. This is the first book, um, House of Earth and Blood. It's the first book in her new series called the Crescent City series. And so because this is the first book, and as you can see, it's pretty detailed, pretty hefty in the pages. Because this is the first book, the beginning had a lot of information load so many new people and characters in this new world learning about this world about the creatures and the, the magical powers that they have or possess and the different clans and it was a lot like the first I want to say two to three hundred pages was kind of slow and it was an information load and really hard to keep up with there is a map in the beginning of the book that I kind of had to keep referring to and I normally tab my books but this book I did not tab and so if you're an avid reader and you tab your books this is definitely one you want to tab so that you can keep up with I will do a separate video on what I thought about this book but I will say that if you can make it past the beginning past the information low past like the slowness it definitely picks up in the middle and the end and it is so good so worth the read but I have been hearing mixed opinions about this book based on her prior work like I said I've never read Sarah J Mass books before so this was my first time being introduced to her even though I knew of her um from Glass of Thrones I believe that was the first series that she wrote um and I knew that it was like this huge seller but I had never read it so I thought really highly of this book I was like okay like I see why everybody loves Sarah J Mass so I'm in this Facebook group and they're like this is some of her like worst work. I read that book and I thought it was really good but some people were really upset that it wasn't as good as the previous series. So during my book haul I decided to go in and grab Court of Thorns and Roses. I was not that interested in the synopsis of Glass of Thrones and I believe she has seven books in that series and I just for my introduction to her I don't know I guess I'm just kind of working backwards because Glass of Thrones was first Court of Thorns and Roses was second and and then Crescent City is her third series to start so I guess I'm kind of going backwards I'm reading three two one so when I went back and read A Court of Thorns and Roses it was so good like I really liked Crescent City but I could see why people were saying like you know her other series were so much better and I I can't say you know I'm not this is a better series not that the first one that i showed you guys is bad if you're thinking about reading it it is such a good read definitely go and check it out but this series was so captivating and so good and this book right here the second one in the series course court of mist and fury became i mean i just finished reading it not too long ago but this became my all-time favorite book favorite sequel like i don't think i can think of anything that comes close to being as brilliantly written as this one. 
it was such a good book so when I am done I am about this deep into the last one in this series there is a novella after this one which I'm pretty sure I'll read because if you read all of them you have to read the novella yeah there is seven it's on the back of the book there is seven um books in the throne of glass series just in case you're wondering but once i make my way through this one i will definitely do a video on what i thought about these books but i bought so many books and i have so many books i want to talk to you guys about so we're gonna move on from these after sarah j mass one of the reasons why i didn't pick throne of glass to read is because i am also reading the shatter me series which has about seven books and three or four novellas itself and the first book was kind of slow um it was an easy read it was a hard read because I wanted a lot more action um a lot more things to occur it was kind of predictable in a way but when I got to the second book I seen the purpose of the first one which was to just introduce us to the characters introduce us to their history into their world and so I tapped things just to get me kind of through the book but it wasn't I'm in the third book in this series or the fourth book in this series and it gets so much better as you continue into their, their world. I feel like she could have put more into this first book but it is just entry into what the world looks like. So I have literally I believe all the books Ignite Me. Um, there is a book after there's a novella after this one so it Shatter Me, Destroy Me, Ignite Me, um, Restore Me, <laughs> Unravel Me, defy me and then the new one that just came out is imagine me and these are just the names of the actual books that she put out these are not the names of all the novellas so the novellas uh kind of are after the main point or after the main book and then she talks about what occurred in that storyline from the point of view of someone else so we follow the main girl um but in the novella it is not from Juliet's point of view. It's from some of the other characters that we see in the story and it helps us really understand what they're going through. And like I said, the first one is not, I'm not gonna tell you that it's amazing and captivating and you won't wanna put it down, but it is a quick read. I believe it's only like 300 pages. I read it in one day and the novella was actually more enticing than the book which led me to wonder what was going to happen in book two and then the novella after book two was even more enticing so now i'm like okay so i love this series i cannot wait to get to the imagine me which just came out i believe in february or march of this year so i'm pretty sure i'm going to get around to this book before it's too late to really do a review on it so you guys can expect that too and by the way these books are by tahiri mafi and I'm becoming a fan of her, you know. Sarah J. Mass is pretty cool, but to, to every Murphy is pretty good too. Next on the list are books that I don't have with me because I have let a friend borrow them. These books are Children of Blood and Bone and Children of Virtue and Vengeance. Those were such good books, such amazing writing techniques. I mean, number one, after number one, I felt like I was not prepared for book number two. I felt like I kind of knew where the storylines was going and I can kind of see the future. And so I had this mindset when I went into book two of what it was going to look like after book one. And the writer did such a good job of taking it. And I mean, book two wasn't anything like I thought it was going to be. It is infuriating it angers me at some of the ways that the characters were acting but I feel like it was realistic characters are not always gonna do what you want them to do and honestly my favorite person in this book is not even the main character it is the princess and I loved her so much in the first book and then in the second one she just I was like girl I was rooting for you we were all rooting for you but it is still good nonetheless and then it ended in such a big cliffhanger that I cannot wait for book number three to come out but it's gonna be a while because uh book number one came out in 2018 and book number two was released in December of 2019 and we're only in April of 2020 so that book has been out for four months total so it's gonna be a minute before we get to the next one the next book that I read was actually on my Amazon fire and and it is actually from Blood and Ash by Jennifer Armentrout. And from Blood and Ash was 
I guess I would rate it like a 3.75 because I feel like it was kind of slow in the beginning. Um, it was super predictable. I want to say, because I take, I kind of tabbed in my tablet too, where I take notes and bookmark it, where I think the story is going to go just to see if I'm right in the end and if I got it right or what the, you know, author did versus the end versus what I thought at that time period. And about 48% in, I had figured out the ending as well. I was like, he's going to be this guy. She's going to do this. Um, but she really wrote the ending in a way that was super interesting. I ended up being right, but the way that she wrote it, she kind of dragged it out. So about 75% in, I was like, wait, like I probably got this all wrong. And I actually was right, but she had me second guessing myself. And then the ending, the ending ended, the conclusion in the book ended pretty opaque. I am actually looking forward to the second book. I believe it's a series. So from Blood and Ash, it's the first one. I don't know what the second one is going to be called or any anticipated release date because from Blood and Ash just came out in March. So it has only been out for one month. And like I said, it is worth the read. It's not the most enticing, but I feel like she kept me interested. And even when I thought I had it all figured out, she had me second guessing. And in the end, I was like, you know what? Wasn't a bad read. So now we're on to the books that I plan to read that are on my to be read shelf that I haven't actually picked up yet, but I will. Serpent and the Dove. I heard really good things about this book, but I have not read the synopsis. I try to stay as far away from the synopsis because I feel like sometimes they give away too much information. And I just want to open a book and get lost in it and not really think anything about it. It's by an author that I recognize. The reviews were good enough. It was in the genre that I was looking forward to. The sales were really good. So, and I'm a sucker for the cover. Like, if you've noticed, the, the books that I've showed you guys have really good covers. And so, any cover that's enticing, I'm gonna read. The second one, I actually did read a little bit of the synopsis about, which is The Shadows Between Us. It is about this girl who apparently killed her first lover and she's kind of like power hungry. And so she wants to marry this king so that she can kill him and take over his kingdom. However, there are other people who want him dead. So she needs to actually keep him alive long enough to marry him and then kill him herself. So the head that she wants is actually has a bounty on it by plenty of other people. So, I mean, her killing her first lover because I think he fell in love with someone else or something like that. Anyways, the cover looks really good. So I am going to be reading it. Some of the other books that I have on my to be read list are in my Amazon cart for a Kindle. I will put them here. Um, I am currently we reading The Wine Witch. Um, I'm only about 10% in, but from what I can gather is there's this girl who got a, she was engaged to a guy and he wanted to like control her super misogyny kind of misogynistic kind of relationship and she wasn't for that she's a witch at a vineyard and they have some of the most exquisite wines i guess there is and it's a lot of french names so i haven't really looked into it but i believe the author might be french or might have based this off of french characteristics um so you'll see a lot of french words in this book but anyways he she refuses to do what he wants her to do and so he puts a curse on her and she's gone for seven years and when she comes back she is blood hungry for vengeance and after seven years of course her world is nothing like she remembered it and it's kind of crashing down around her so she's stuck between helping her grandmother and fixing her world and also still getting the vengeance that she wants. I am also planning to read Ash Princess um, by Laura Sebastian on Kindle, it has 4.5 out of 5 stars, so I'm super interested. I'll actually read you the t synopsis for that one. It is, Theodosia was 6 when her country was invaded and her mother, the Fire Queen, was murdered before her eyes. On that day, the Kaiser took Theodosia's family, her land, her name. Theo was crowned Ash Princess, a title of shame to bear in her new life as a prisoner. For 10 years, Theo has been captive in her own place. She endured relentless abuse and ridicule, ridicule of Kaiser and his court. She is powerless, surviving in her new world, only by burying the girl she is deep inside. 
Then one night, the Kaiser forces her to do the unthinkable. With blood on her hands and all hope of reclaiming her throne lost, she realizes that surviving is no longer enough. But she does have a weapon, her mind. She is sharper than any sword, and power isn't always won on the battlefield. So, I am super interested in reading this. I'm a sucker for coming back and reclaiming your throne and getting what is due to you, especially if it involves some type of magical powers. Um, another book that I have on this list is called The Cruel Prince. The Cruel Prince is actually the first book in a series by Holly Black. It also has 4.5 views, 4.5 out of 5 reviews on Kindle. Um, it follows a mortal, mortal girl who finds herself caught in a web of royal fairy intrigued. I'm a sucker for fairies. I love fairies. I don't know why, but out of like vampires and werewolves and wovens, I would be a fairy because why not? Jude was seven years old when her parents were murdered. It always, it always starts with a murder. Always, okay? It is always going to involve some heart-wrenching murder that they cannot get over in these fantasy books. I mean, Sarah J. Mass is famous for killing people. And also making you, making you wait for a long time before the main characters even touch or kiss. And thirdly, she's famous for switching the love interest in her books. So anyways, Drew was seven years old when her parents were murdered and she and her two sisters were stolen away to live in a treacherous high court of fairy. Ten years later, Jude wants nothing more than to belong there despite her mortality. But many of the Fae despise humans, especially Prince Cardin, the youngest and wickedest of the youngest and wickedest son of the High King. To win a place in court, she must defy him and face the consequences. A rebel. A rebel amongst us. How can you not want to read that? Um, the next book that I have on here is Three Dark Crowns. This one has four out of five reviews on Kindle. The synopsis says, In every generation on the island of Finburn, a set of triplets is born. Three queens, all equal heirs to the crown, and each possessor of a coveted magic. Mirabella is fierce, elemental, able to spark hungry flames or vicious storms at the snap of her fingers. Catherine is a prisoner, who can ingest the deadliest poisons without so much as a stomach ache. Arsenal is a naturalist who is said to have the ability to bloom the reddest rose and control the fiercest lions. Becoming queen crowned isn't solely a matter of royal birth. Each, each sister has to fight for it. Three queens, three magical powers, one crown. Bloodbath. Murders, drama, love, sex. I can, I can hear it in the book. So those are the books that I am planning to read. I will make a video with my most anticipated releases throughout this year. Um, for my most anticipated releases, I also plan to do book reviews for those. So you can be on the lookout for that. And yeah, that is all that I'm doing during my quarantine. I am swimming in books and I am loving it. If there's any genres that you guys have been reading that you kind of want to talk about, let's chat about them. Leave them down in my comment section. And when I'm out of books and I'm ready for my next book call, I'll be sure to check them out. In the meantime, stay safe. Stay from outside. Let's all do our part so this quarantine can be over. And I'll be here in my books. Bye.